My name is Anders Jensen. Let's learn some UiPath. Today we will see how we can set up unattended UiPath robots. First of all, an unattended robot is a robot that can run without human interference, compared to an intended robot which will run whenever we click start. So let's create it in UiPath. First, we go to cloud.uipath.com and it's important that you copy all my steps here. So open up a browser and a UiPath and let's create it together. So we go here and we log in with our credentials. Mine is here. Like this. And if you don't have an account, then you should go create one. You can go download UiPath and create an account there. So we sign in. And there's no magic with this. So as with everything, it can seem a little bit overwhelming at the beginning, but I'll hold your hand throughout this tutorial. So just do it with me. Here we have the automation cloud. That is the front door of the orchestrator. And we can see that we have a service here. It's called anasjensen.org. But say that you don't got it here, then it will say create new here. Let me show you how that will look. So I'll just delete my tenant here, like this, like this. So if you for some reason have a create new here, then just create new. Click add tenant and we could call it again anasjensen.org, like this, save. This is also good if you want to be sure that you have a fresh install, then you can copy all my steps here in the video. So let's go again to home and we see our tenant here. We click the tenant like that. And now we can make the connection between UiPath at your computer and orchestrator. Right now, I'll just connect, connect my computer here with studio on, but say that you want to create a, a connect another computer to run your unattended robot there. It will be the same procedure. So go to your start menu and then search for UiPath assistant like this. It will open up here asking you to sign in. If it doesn't, let me show you. It will be down here in your tray. So click the arrow here and click UiPath Assistant. If you for some reason is signed in, you probably are, then you can just click sign out and we will click sign in back. You'll find this sign out up here in the prefer preferences. So click sign in. A browser pop up will ask you if you want to open UiPath and that is why we logged in before, but just click this one here and you will see that in a few seconds we are connected to Orchestrator. That's how easy it is nowadays to connect to Orchestrator. We can see the little green light here. So that's it. Then we go back to Orchestrator, like here. Click Tenant and we will create a folder for our project. That's something I use to do to keep my project organized. This my workspace that is for attended automation. So I click folders here. Then I click the plus sign and we could call it something. I'll call it Hafnir. And if you know what this means, you can let me know in the comments. It's very Danish, I'll tell you that. Then I'll click create like that. Now we need to have a process to start unattended. So let's create it in UiPath Studio. I have my studio here and we will create a very simple solution that show some integration with the user. So I'll find an input dialog here and I'll drag it in. The title that could just be name game. We will ask the user to put in his or her name. So please let's be a little bit polite. Put in your name here. The value ends it, we will store that into a variable. So press control K, I will call this str name. That's it. So this uh, activity will take user input and store it into a variable. Let's present it in a message box like this. Scroll a little bit down and drag in a message box. Here I will just say in quotation marks, hi, your name is colon is blank and then my variable here. Like this. So a really simple automation, but that is fine. Then I click publish. This one will publish our project here in studio to orchestrator. We could give it a name and I'll just call it name game. That's fine. The version that is 1.0.1. That's also fine. We could add some icons, whatever we don't, but then click publish options here. 
Here we can either choose to publish it to our personal workspace or click the drop down and take the tenant. This means that it will be shared across all uh, users of the tenant. We will do that. Then I'll click publish. We will have a success message in a second. Here it is. We publish it successfully. Then we can go back to Orchestrator. So go to your browser again and here's Orchestrator. Make sure you're still in the tenant up here. So click the tenant if you're not there. Then click users because now we will do some user setup. Find your user. Mine is here. This is not a group like the other ones. This is a user. So I click the three dots over here and then I click edit like this. First one is that we need a role for this user in order to allow this user, which is me, to run the unattended automation. So down here in user details, roles, I'll select allow to be automation user like that. Then I click unattended robot. We will activate our unattended robot and then we will find a domain and username. We cannot use this. So go to your start menu, search for CMD and open the command prompt. Here you will type in who am I like this. And I'll copy it back and replace it with this auto generated thing. In the password, you will type in your Windows password. I'll type in mine, which is this. And then we are done with the user rights. You can click update. Hey friend, if you like this video and if it's helped you, then you can really help me by giving it a thumbs up. That will improve my reach and make me really happy. Now we need to assign a runtime unattended license. So I go to machines. This one is my machine here, the local machine. So I'll click the three dots. Then I'll click edit machine. And in here, license unattended runtimes. I will put in one and click update. Now we need to add this machine to our Hafnir folder. Remember that was our project. So I go to folders up here, still in tenant. Click the folders. Be sure you are in your created folder. Mine was Hafnir. Then I go over here to machines. I click the nine white dots. If you know what that is called, let me know in the comments. Then I'll tick this one here and I click update like that. Now we can run our created automation. So go to your folder. Mine was called Hafnir. So I'll click that. Then I click automations. Here, we can see that we have no processes here. So let's add the one that we just created in UiPath by clicking the plus sign here. We will select our package. So click the drop down here and you can see that the name game is here. That's it. Then we can click continue here. And these one will uh, be default values. This is, this is optional. We can give it another name or another description, but let's just be it here. Click create. Now we can actually start it. We can start it manually from Orchestrator. Say you will sit on the other side of the earth. You can start it from here. That one will be the simple approach. Afterwards, we will see how we can create a trigger to start it at a certain time or when a queue item is added. But let's just start it manually. So click the play button here. Here we will have it again. Be sure that up under job type, it says unattended. We can specify if we have more users, more machines, we could specify that, but we will just take whatever that's there. I only have one user and one machine now. So I click start. And in a few seconds, our automation will run locally on this computer. You see it here. Please put in your name. Mine is Anas. I'll click OK. And the message box comes up. That's how you create an unattended robot in UiPath. But say that you want to use a trigger. Then we can, instead of just starting it manually, we go to triggers here. You can see that there's no triggers here, so we can click the plus again. Here we can either choose a time trigger. That is, if we want to run our automation at a certain time every day. For example, I have some robots that runs every night when I sleep. They just use my computer to do the things that I want. So I can add a time trigger here, or I could add a queue trigger. That is, that's it. We use queues a lot. You can see it up here in Orchestrator. And actually, if you want to learn more about queues, you should learn about the UiPath Reframework. 
I created a one hour course that will take you through each step. It's also the framework that all enterprises use. So if you want a UI path job, you should learn the reframework. Click the video here on the screen to be taken to this video.